this week we're going to have a look at um first of all we're going to have a quick run through of boots because we kind of ran out of time last time so a quick run through of boots and then rugs um travel protection stable bandages tail bandages that type of thing um so because this one's a little bit easier i thought we'd just do more of a chatty one and less of a um screen share presentation one um, so first of all, just running through boots, we're just going to quickly think of the um, importance of the different types of boots. So um, can someone tell me what brushing boots do, what they protect, that type of thing? To stop them bashing their hooves into their legs. Uh, yeah, so it's protecting the inside of the leg, the inside of the, the inside tendons, and as the name says, it's from brushing against each other. Um, so when would you use brushing boots? Doing cross country. Normally flat work. Okay. Most exercises. Okay. Yeah, you'd use them general day to day. I'd probably use more protective boots for cross country. Um, but yeah, hacking, schooling, that type of thing. Um, what about tendon boots, show jumping boots or tendon boots? What are, um, what do they do? They protect the fetlocks and uh, the tendons. Yeah. yeah, so fetlocks are mainly tendons. So um, because they give the support around the back of the leg, um, especially in the front, that's um, so, yeah, protecting their tendons. Um, so as the name suggests, they're good for show jumping. Um, what about cross country boots? Protected all the way around. Yeah, so they're protected all the way around and they're normally a bit longer behind. Um, and the reason they're longer behind is because when the horse is in full gallop or when the horse is getting a bit tired, um, they're more likely to knock into it themselves. Um, and the reason that it's hard all round is in case they hit a jump or hit into themselves um, or anything like that. Um, so yeah, that's just a quick run through of, so make sure we know what all of the boots are for and why they're important, um, just because we missed out on that last week. Okay, so um, like first we're gonna go through rugs, um, discussing a variety of rugs. Um, so let's think about um, your horse's essential summer and winter wardrobe. What rugs would you guys include like if you had to just pick the essentials what would you have for your horse new zealand yeah a new zealand with like a filling in it so it's really nice and warm yeah so um a, a warm new zealand yeah and like a sheet and like a sheet new zealand yeah like a waterproof new, just like a waterproof or a thinner new zealand yeah what, what else Pardon? A stable rug or like a travel rug? Yeah, a stable rug. Yeah. Um, what else? Flat rug. Flat rug. Flat rug. Yeah. And that's pretty much it for essentials, probably. Yeah, Maybe a small fleece rug. Mm -hmm. Does someone say fly rug? Yeah. Yeah, fly rug in the summer is quite important. Um, but yeah, as you say, so the essentials, I would say, is a warm outdoor. A waterproof outdoor, um, yeah. a fly rug for outside, and then a stable rug, and um, either a sheet or a sweat rug or something for in the summer if they get hot. Um, so running through New Zealand, um, what do you guys put on your? When would you use like a four hundred gram New Zealand with a neck, for example? Oh, winter. In the winter when it's like rainy snowing and raining and really cold yeah so what type kind of temperatures are we thinking if we're putting in on a does everyone know what i mean by 400 gram very heavy weight like a heavy weight uh that's the amount of stuffing in it isn't it yeah, yeah so 400 gram is kind of the max normal you'll get like a um weight. you can probably get more than that but that's generally like the max you can get just like at a general tax tax store um okay so yeah as so raining snowing what kind of temperatures are we thinking five degrees and less probably 
Yeah, so yeah. Uh, is there anything else you need to consider when you're rugging up? Like wind. Wind, yeah. Makes it colder, so. Yeah. Whether they're clipped or not makes a big difference. Um, so if they're, they're, if they're not clipped, they really shouldn't need anything thick at all over the winter because the whole point of their coat. If it's snowing or torrential rain, you'd probably put a thin New Zealand on, but they're not going to need something thick. Um, because they're Does, their age... Pardon? Does the age come into it as well? Yeah. Yeah, so age, um, thickness of coat. Um, older horses are going to get colder more easily. Um, do you think horses get warm? Like, do you think they can keep themselves warmer when they're inside or outside? Outside, because they're walking around and like nibbling yeah. and grass and moving yeah. around. Yeah, so they'll keep themselves warmer when they're outside. Um, and if you're, why is it really important to make sure your New Zealand rugs fit really, really well? So they don't get caught on anything? Yeah, um, don't get caught on anything. Particularly, the horse doesn't get caught up um, in the New Zealand. Um, so how do you make sure your like your New Zealand rug fits really really well? So you're turning out on a um, really windy night, one of the nights where we had the storms earlier on this year, and it's going to be sideways rain and heavy wind, heavy strong winds and heavy rain. Um, what checks are you going to make to your rug before you turn your horse out? You've got to make sure like the sur singles are um, are tight enough, but not like rubbing on their belly. Yeah, so you want to fit about a fist and nothing else um, under the sur, sur singles. Um, what's the danger if the sur singles are too long? Like they'll get their legs. Get caught in their legs if they're going to roll or something. Yeah, what else will, would you want to check? That it's not too long. Um, can will it, it slip them? brown? What do you mean? Me. Yeah, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, if it like slips, does that makes sense. Yeah. So like, what? Um, what would you use to make sure that it doesn't? Um, make sure you put them up like tight enough. Yeah. Anything in particular you need to think about? Think about the wind. So the back under the tail, because if you're not attached, it will blow up and over their head. Um, yeah, and if it's in New Zealand, what attachments should there be back there? Leg leg around the legs. Yeah, leg straps. So the most important thing if you're turning a horse out, um, particularly like you should really, every time they go out um, to the field, they should have a rug with leg straps mm -hmm. on, um, probably as well as the tail straps. So the leg ones, one goes around each leg and then they connect in the middle. So that stops the wind blowing it up, anything else blowing it up, um, the rug's not going to be able to get like up and onto the horse's back if you've got leg straps on. How do you make sure the leg straps are correctly fitting? Uh, Most of them are elastic, aren't they? Um, there's sometimes a bit of elastic, but that's more, the tail strap tends to be more elastic than the leg straps. Well, you've got to have it not so tight that it's like rubbing. Yeah, it's but similar to the sourcing. Tight enough, yeah. Um, you don't want it so low that it's hanging around their hocks. Um, you don't want it rubbing, but generally you would prefer them too tight than too loose. Um, what about when you put, when would you put a neck on your rug? Um, yeah, when you're turning out. The neck? Pardon? When you've clipped all the way up their neck. Yeah. Yeah, so if the neck's not clipped, when else? When it's extra cold. Extra cold, yeah. Also, if, they, like, if they've been off work and they don't have very much muscle or like fat, so they're quite thin. Yeah. Any hats on? The bits of weather that you'd. Kind of horizontal rain and kind of. Yeah, if it's raining, raining, you'd probably put the neck on the rug just because it gives them a waterproof layer. Um, not necessarily like, it doesn't necessarily need to be there to keep them warm, but to keep them dry, and then they'll probably keep themselves warm. Um, so who can tell me the correct pony club way to put on a rug? 
It's the front, the back, the middle, and then the neck, if you have one, I think. Any other ideas? Doesn't have to be Is like it folding it on their bum or the neck? I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, you're on the right line. So you should fold the rug in half, back to front. So you should have it so that, um, like, yeah, fold it in half from the tail to the, um, to the neck. Then place it over their withers, do up the front, unfold it, um, do up the surcingles, surcingles, do up the back, and then to take it off, do up the back, middle, front, and then fold it in half onto their bum and slide it off. So that's something just to practice because if you're BTS, you'll be expected to do it the correct way. Um, and it's not necessarily the most natural. So it's none of this like throwing the rug on, you've got to fold it, place it do it up. Why is it important that you don't drag the rug forward? Why do you put it on their neck and fold it backwards? Goes against the hair. Yeah, so that their hair doesn't get pulled, pulled back or anything like that. Um, okay. Um, what are the advantages of using, um, like using rugs? Outdoor, indoor, whatever. They don't get dirty. Yeah, keeps them clean. So a lot of places, even in the summer, um, on like professional yards, will have sheets, stable sheets for their horses, um, for exactly that reason to keep them clean. Why else? Helps so keep weight on them. Yeah, if you've got a horse that's losing weight, um, as you say, if they're you don't want them feeling cold at all. Uh, if you want to do, if you want to have diggy. If you're doing like heavy exercise, like hunting, in the winter, and you want to have them clipped so they don't get all sweaty, but you still want to turn them out. Yeah, as you say, clipped in the winter. Um, what? Why else? Uh, rugs good. We can think of different types of rugs. Keep the flies off them. Yeah, fly rugs are good to keep fly flies off of them. <laughs> and some warmer, like cooler, cooler rugs. Yeah, cooling rugs. Sweat rugs are good. What about some disadvantages of any of these rugs? Well, if the horse like constantly rips the rugs, then it can be quite expensive to keep like replacing them. Yeah, and that's a really good point. Some horses rip rugs, chew rugs, um, are generally younger horses. Um, uh, can be quite naughty with rugs. And as you say, it can get very expensive. They can overheat with the rugs. Yeah. On. Big yeah, up. if you get it wrong, they can overheat. When you're rugging up a horse, up you do it for, for how you're feeling. As in, would you go outside and be like, oh, it feels quite cold, going to put a warm rug on? Yeah. How would you, why not, and how would you do it? Because they have like a layer of fur. And yeah, like and they're also fun. better at controlling their temperature than we are. Yeah. Um. It's when you interfere, so when you clip them, that's when they're not so good. Um, if you don't have good like protection in the field, so if you don't have a good field shelter or um, like a good wind break, you're gonna have to help them a bit more. Um, but one of the most important things is look at, at the like at the weather forecast rather than just how you're feeling. Um, what are some other disadvantages of rugs? Or indoor or indoor outdoor. If they're dirty, like what? it, you have you'll have to um, wash it more, maybe. Yeah, so it's can it be I expensive to wash? It's a bit similar to the repair one. If they if they rip them, then it, that they could their legs could get caught if they um, roll or something. Yeah, it becomes it's another thing they can get tangled up in. Any other reasons? You can rub if they're not fitted correctly. Yeah, badly fitting ones can rub. And even like well fitting ones in the winter, um, if, you, if your horse is wearing a thick New Zealand every single day, it's likely to get its bit of mane, that patch of mane rubbed out. Um, what else? No? Fine. Um, so there's also, it's kind of similar along to Eva's line, but there is a danger to a horse wearing rugs. Um, 
they can quite easily get themselves if they're not well fitted um they can easily get themselves caught up in it and panic and then injure themselves um or things like that which aren't very nice um so definitely worth considering that when you're thinking of rugging up um what are your thoughts on rugging up folds if it's like really cold i think it's acceptable, yeah. otherwise I kind of just need to like toughen up a little. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's is an opinion thing. Some people rug folds up. My opinion is in the wild, they wouldn't have a stable to come into at night, which quite a lot of folds do if the weather's bad or anything like that. And um, as you, they need to grow their own natural coat, and the best way for them to do that is just to deal with the elements. Um, if you've got an unwell fold, you might want to help out a bit more um okay let's think about quickly rugs for traveling um when or what rug would you put on your horse to travel in what situation really like a fleece fleece you fleece. don't want it to be too thick because otherwise it gets quite hot in the box yeah and let's um say we're you're traveling a horse on a day like today what would you rug it in probably nothing yeah, I'm very lightweight. Um, do, do you think horses get hot or cold when they're traveling? Hot. 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 Yeah, so they're constantly, constantly. They're constantly, constantly moving, they're constantly moving, they're constantly their muscles, so they're going to get quite hot. Could some um, horses get. What was that? If you leave the, like, the, wind, the back windows open, can't they get really cold if that, all the wind and stuff comes in? They can't. Is this with trailers or lorries? Oh, I was thinking about trailers. Trailers, yeah. So trailers get colder than lorries. Um, and as you say, if there's a really strong wind, they can get cold. Um, in the summer, they probably don't need to travel in anything. Um, generally, people over rug rather than under rug. Um, for long journeys, do you think the horses will get hotter or, short, or colder than short journeys? Hotter. I'm yeah, so long thinking. journeys. If you're traveling a long way, um, it's um, really, it's really not over rug. over rug. What about if there's multiple horses in the lorry or trailer? I don't get horses. Yeah. So, um, if it's let's say it's ten degrees, the horses are clipped out. You're taking two in the lorry. What would you, what would you put on them? Probably a little fleece. Yeah, possibly yeah. at least, possibly naked. Um, it's just you got you've always got to consider that they're going to get warm traveling. Um, but it's a good point, Archie, about the windows. Um, when you are traveling, particularly in a lorry, how many, how open do you think you should have your windows? How many should you ha windows should you have open, etc. Enough to allow a bit of a breeze, but not to allow too much wind. Anyone else think anything else? Yeah, just to like let them have a bit of fresh air, but not so not much. good ventilation. Yeah, so for long journeys in particular, um, I think it's really important they have lots of ventilation, as you say. I would always open all of my windows, um, and I'd prefer to put another rug on, like put a thicker rug on and have good ventilation than have the windows closed but then be able to travel naked if that makes sense um, and sometimes in the winter that's not what you want to do um i would say the exception to this would be if it's raining you wouldn't want like rain coming in on them um so then i would think about closing windows a little bit but always have them open a bit um and what about traveling a horse in general um what do you travel your horses in? Travel boots. Hill bandage. And then you can use like a pole guard, can't you? Yeah, so what's a pole guard? It's like a little bit of like something that attaches to their head collar. Yeah. They say like they rear up or something. Yeah, good. With their head. Yeah, so it's like a bit of padding um, that goes across the top of the head. Um, so do you all use travel boots? Yeah. 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 You yeah. Can, you yeah. Can have bandages or like the wrap on ones. Yeah, so you can have bandages or boots. 
Um, does anyone travel their horses without? Maybe I maybe. travel one with. I used to. I used to with the youngster. Yeah, so young ones, particularly if they're um, just starting to learn what traveling is, they yeah. might find it a little bit stressful having huge long boots on. Um, why do you travel your horses in bandages? Or boots, sorry. Why do you travel them in boots? Protection. Protection. Protection, Especially yeah. if they're traveling like with another horse, they could get like stepped on. Yeah, so protection from themselves and as you say, other horses. Um, why is it important that travel boots fit really well? So they don't slip. They don't. Yeah, so cool. important they don't slip, they don't get too oh, well. tight. tight. Um, what's the danger if they have slipped down or they do slip down? Yeah, step on them, it can trip them up. Um, it will cause them stress. Um, what, why would you bandage over um, boot, travel boots? Keep Does it give more support? Yeah, it gives, so it I don't what everyone said. Um, but yeah, there's a little bit more specific support um, with bandages, but I'd say boots, give more like it protects foot a, a bigger distance um that's also less hassle with boots than bandages um and some horses find them a little bit less like if you've got a youngster and you're just introducing him to traveling in something if you're trying to convince him to stand still while you put four bandages on um he might not be that impressed whereas if you're just popping boots on it might not be as bad what are your thoughts on traveling horses with like brushing boots on? Doesn't give as much prote protection. protection. They're not padded they're not really, padded. really. If it's if like you think... there again, they're like, if they're just starting out, I reckon it's better than nothing. And it's like yeah. nothing's heavy duty, so. Yeah, as you say, it's better than nothing. Um, some horses will completely object to travel boots. Yeah. Um, and so they are better than nothing. They give a bit of protection. Um, they might be something you consider for a very short journey, um, or if the horse is traveling on its own. Um, and what about, so someone mentioned tail bandages. Why do you use tail bandages when traveling? So they, get so they don't the like rub their tail while yeah. on it. Yeah, so they don't rub their tail. Um, why else might you use a travel bandage, a tail bandage for traveling? Yeah, keep some tail neat. So if you're going for training or um, a competition, if you've plaited the tail, it keeps it all tidy. Um, and who can explain to me how you do a tail bandage? Put it on. <laughs> <laughs> Anything more specific? Um, you have to like overlap the top and the bottom. Start at the top and then work your way down and then go, go back up. A bit, but you yeah. Do it for the length of their dock. Yep, do it for the length of their dock. That's a good point. Um, you want to think of having a triangle. So when you first start the tail bandage at the top, your first loop round, after you've done a loop round, you want to tuck a bit of the top of the tail bandage back down and then continue to loop, um, which helps stop it slipping. How it does it matter if there are like creases in your tail bandage? Yeah, because it put uneven pressure on their tail. Yep, so put an, as you say, uneven pressure, which could cause hair loss. Um, how tight or loose should your tail bandage be? Like a finger at the top and the bottom. Yeah, finger yep. at the top and the bottom. You don't want it to slip and stress them out. Well, you want it to be even pressure. Yeah, even pressure all the way around. Um, and how long should you leave a tail bandage on for? Three, That's six hours. I don't know. And then you like so that you can see that it's not too tight or cutting off their circulation. Yeah, so I would say max would be three three hours, um, because as you say, it cuts off their circulation. Um, so if you were traveling a long way, you'd want to stop, you'd need to be stopping to give the horse a break and, and offer it a drink. And at the same time, I would take all travel boots, bandages off, let them let their legs their tail breathe increase the circulation a bit um and then re 
reapply them. Um, and so it just gets the, gets the blood moving, keeps the blood moving, um, keeps them comfortable. Um, anything else you might travel your horse in? Over each boot. Yeah, over each boots. Why might you travel a horse in over each boots? So they don't pull a shoe on themselves. Yeah, so yeah, horses so horse tend to tend bite to... onto themselves. Um, you can travel them in over each boots. Um, front, back, all four. All four. All four. Yeah, if they're ones that tend to stand on themselves, you, I would prefer to be overprotective and under, particularly when they're traveling. So I would put all four on. Um, and it also protects them if they're gonna like step onto their coronet band or anything, it will protect, um, protect them from that. Um, and let's think about loading horses. Um, what, what might you wear for loading yourself? Gloves. Hat, gloves. Hat, boots. Yeah. Um, and what might you put on the horse to load? Bridle. Bridle, yeah. So it's best practice to load them in a bridle for control, but if you know your horse and your horse is safe and a good loader, um, a head collar is fine. Um, mm, head collar. Yeah, so just a head collar. Um, if your horse is a very bad loader and very badly behaved and can get dangerous, what could you use? Chichini. Yeah, but with extreme caution, mm -hmm. which is they can be pretty horrible on the horse. Um, we've seemed to have got two Taras, which is quite interesting. Oh, there we go. Um, um, and what are some methods you could use for a horse that's not a good loader? You could do the lunge line nuts, around nuts. the Make some food. Like food on it. Food, yeah, the lunge line. So, how do you make? How do you? How do you use the lunge line in a safe way? Get two people stand standing far away, and then you like put it on their bottom, and kind of like put pressure on their bottom, so they feel that they can't reverse. Yeah. Should the two people be wearing the same as the person loading the horse? Yeah. Yeah. Hats and yeah. Gloves. yeah hats, gloves, and good boots. Um, what else can you do if you've got a horse that's a bad loader? So food, lunge line. A friend to follow. Yeah, so it, particularly if you've got a trailer and you can take the horse back out once the other horse is in. Um, as you say, a friend. Or if you're just training them in the lorry or trailer, um, the first few times they go, have another horse in there so it's not scary. What else? You have so a door. door. Hang on, what was that? Door. Yeah, open the door, all the doors, all the windows. Um, to the horse, it's just a big dark box. So the lighter you can make it and the more exit routes they can see, the happier they are. Also, can we do that thing where like you put it for the entrance of their field and then open it up and they have to go through it every single time they go into their field? Yeah, so if you, yeah, so this is with a trailer or if you've got a lorry that's got two ramps. Yeah. Um, but more with a trailer, you can park it, as you say, through the field or just on a route they go through regularly in the gateway. So they have to walk through it. So it's not always that they go in there to travel. And then they like associate it with food. And that's good. Yeah. Um, what else can you do? You can have a whip and mostly you don't even have to whip, like actually touch the horse. You can just stand there with a whip and then they'll be like, oh, if I don't do what they ask. Like, if, it, if it's not scared of the box, but if it's, like, naughty on purpose, like a naughty little pony. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you can carry. Um, yeah. You don't actually have to like, actually whip them. If you just stand there, then they'll think, oh, better buck up my ideas a bit. Yeah, that is a good point. Some cheeky horses just need a reminder. Yeah. Uh, what else can we do? If they're like nervous, yeah, Scarlett. If they're nervous, you might just need time and patience with food or something. Yeah, as you say, some horses are generally scared and might just take a bit of time, and you might need to leave time. If you're going somewhere where you have to get there for a certain time, you might need to leave extra time um, to get them on the horse box or the lorry or the trailer. Like, what else? Make a big fuss of them whenever they kind of take a step forward. Yeah. You could put a friend on there, like another horse on there first. So. Yeah. Anything else? What if the horse is always like 
running off to the right or something every time you try and load it. Someone's lying to the right. Someone's down there. Yeah. No what if it's them. just you? You have no one else there to help you. Could lead them on from the right. Yeah, so you can lead them in from that way. So they've got to go across the ramp. You have like a spare shavings bag or something. You can stand it up next to the ramp so they literally can't run. Yep, you can make it easy, even easier for yourself than that. You can park up with a wall or something on that side of the ramp, um, so they physically can't go off to that side. Um, what about a loading bay? Does everyone know what a loading bay is? Yeah. Um, how do loading bays work? What's the point of them? Isn't it for a youngster? Uh, yeah, not, all, not always, but a lot of people use them when, if they have one, they'll always use them on a horse that's never loaded before. But it, they're also good for horses that um, mm -hmm. loaders. Pardon? Nothing, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. How does it work then? Doesn't it have sides so they kind of, they're almost channeled towards the either lorry or trailer? Yep, so it has two sides. It's also normally at a height. So what you do is you lower the ramp onto basically a step so that the ramp is more level and not as steep. Some horses don't like the fact that they're walking up a steep ramp. Um, so it then means they're just walking across something rather than upwards um so loading ramps are quite good um any other ideas no everything i think we covered most ways to load bad travelers what would you do if you had a bad loader um what would you do yourself like Say you're not trying to go somewhere, but just in order to train it to be a better loader, what would you do? Give them, if, they, if you rate, rate them, put them, give them their supper every night in the trailer and let them stand there and eat it. Yeah. And then just take them out after. Yeah. So obviously, horses love food. And so they'll always think every time they go in the trailer, then they. Nothing, they, will, they, they just stand there, eat their food and come out and then they'll just be really chill. Yeah, yeah, and that covers two other things. So first of all, they then associate it with feed, which is good, like it's a positive in their brain. And second of all, they don't always associate it with then going somewhere. Um, why might a horse be a bad loader? Um, out of the farm. Pardon? Bad experience, I heard. They don't like um, actually like going to competitions or going out. Yeah, so um, we'll go cover those two quickly. So bad experience is basically what it sounds like if a horse has injured itself in the lorry or there's been a crash or something horrible, so they've broken down on the M4 and um, been stuck on the lorry for hours and hours. Anything like that can traumatise a horse and they'll remember. Um, they'll then associate the lorry or a horse box or a trailer with that bad experience. Um, so you've then got to try and make them think of it as think of something positive when they go in there rather than that bad experience. Um, and then Edith's point of they might not like going out of the yard. That's normally an anxiety type thing. So if your horse, a horse is um, a complete stress head when it goes away, it might enjoy competing, but find the process stressful, um, then it might not be a good traveler because it knows what's coming. Um, and it's also the fact that they're going away from home. If you've got a nappy horse, they're probably gonna be worse to load because it's that whole thing, they're going away from home. They're probably gonna be better when you're loading them to come home than when you're loading them to go away. Why else might a horse be a bad traveler? Maybe if they're just stubborn. Yeah, just stubborn. Some don't have to have a reason, and they're probably the most frustrating. Um, any other reasons? Not very good at balancing themselves. So yeah, if you like it. Yeah, so some horses are just like don't quite figure out how to travel well. Some horses will sound like a rock. Some will stumble all over the place. Um, so they'll probably associate it with being tired and. Um, not a very enjoyable experience. Um, so, how's the how? What's a good way to um, help them become better travellers? 
They might have a particular side they want to travel on. My opponent, if he's on the wrong side, he'll just fall over because they he quite likes to lean on the wall. Yeah, so sides, um, how far forward or back in the... So if it's side facing, how far forward or back they are. Um, if it's like a front facing one, which side they're on. Some horses travel really badly facing like forwards and some travel okay facing backwards or vice versa. Some also um, like the space where they're actually traveling like wider or narrower. So some can feel like enclosed. Yeah, as you say, so like a lot of people, if they've got a horse that's a bad traveller, think that giving it a lot of space will help, but quite often it's the opposite. They want something to lean on on each side. They like the security and the comfort of that. Um, why, why else might a horse be a bad traveller? They don't want to leave their friends and their little herd. Yeah. Um, I think you said it before, that if they have anxiety about leaving their friends... And those then, are probably uh, the hardest ones to get over. And those are probably the ones, the reason that a lot, a lot of some people get companion ponies is to have to the horse um, just to keep them happy when they have to go away. Um, and because it's easier to travel a pony than a full-sized horse. Um, are there any other reasons you can think of? Maybe if it feels confined in the L'Oreal trailer. Yeah. yeah, so some horses just don't like small spaces. Um, um, one of the best ways to help a bad traveller get better is to do short journeys um, and only ever travel them to do something that they're going to enjoy for a while. So, like, take them, if you've got a horse that absolutely loves hacking, put it in a trailer, drive it uh, five miles down the road and hack back from there so that they are hacking home um, they're enjoying the hack, they've not been in the trailer or lorry for long, um, and they can then just start um, relating it to a positive experience rather than a negative. Has anyone done anything specific with their horse um, or pony or know of anything that anyone's had to do? Just How driven, bad really slowly mm -hmm. and carefully um, so the horse doesn't get scared or scared jogged around by big bumps and things like that and not going around corners too quickly yeah, just to right. make them happy. Well, I haven't done that, but my mum has because I can't drive a trailer. Yeah, that's quite an important one that a lot of people get is driving well, making sure whoever is driving the horse is remembering that they've got a horse on board um, so that the horse doesn't suddenly get slammed forward or anything like that. Um, and also thinking about the route you take. So a lot of places, like a lot of equestrian places will be in the middle of nowhere. Um, you want to try and take the most, the straightest route you can, even if it's not the most direct. So try and use the mo motorways or um, dual carriageways rather than Wrigley routes. And there's a of taking the Wrigley routes anyway. So you have to work it. Most of like the sat navs take you Wrigley routes. Yeah, so it's best to plan your route before you set off. But um, avoid, avoid um, roundabouts. Yeah, if you can, because they're very unbalancing for horses. Um, do you guys think that horses can get travel sick? Yeah. Probably. Yeah, probably. I mean, if we can, then like... Exactly. So it's, it's not going to be the same as us, but it's similar. I've had a horse um, that's got travel sick before. We got basically stuck on the way to an event and ended up having to drive through the middle of, I think it was Bath to get there, which was incredibly wriggly, incredibly horrible for the horse. The horse isn't naturally a good traveler. Um, and he arrived at the competition quite dazed, not himself. We thought he might have a virus or something and speaking to other people, um, turns out he was probably just travel sick. I think it took us about six hours to do a three hour journey. Um, so that's something to consider. If you get somewhere and you've had a hideous journey, you might want to just let your horse settle for half an hour, get it off the lorry, give it some grass. Um, and I say that's quite a good one to think about no matter how far you go. Um, when you, you always want to leave enough time that when you arrive at your location or destination, you can let the horse settle for a bit, rest for a bit, um, just get their head around the traveling. So it's not like, get to the wherever you're getting 
throw on tack, get on, do your stuff, whip the tack off, jump back in the lorry and go again. Um, because you just want them to have enough time to just think about what they're doing. Um, if you're putting stable bandage on um, for traveling, what will you use under the stable bandage? Like a bit of a um, bit of um, Gamgee. Yeah. And how like how high would you want the Gamgee to go? Just um, below then. Hang on, what was that? Below the knee. You want to like cover the knee, but you don't want to actually wrap it over the knee. Yeah, so I'd say for traveling, you'd want the Gamgee a little bit longer. So as you say, you want it loose enough that they can easily walk onto the lorry, but you don't want the bandage going over their knee. You want to be able and to why, would, why is it good to have the knee slightly protected when they're traveling? In case, in case they, like, they like, kick up. In case they kick up. Yeah. Any other reasons? If they go down on their knees, then they're protected. Yeah. Yeah, if they fall on their knees, they might get a grazed knee. Um, thinking about that, has anyone ever heard of anything specific you can travel in to protect their knees? Oh, can't you get like kneecap things? Yeah, you can get knee boots. Um, so they protect the front of the knee. There's a strap at the top and a strap underneath the knee. Um, and you can also get hook boots that do the same thing, basically. What about tail guards? What are people's thoughts on them? They're really good. The tail protection. Yeah, so it gives the tail even more protection. Um, it works similarly to a tail bandage. It's a bit quicker to do. It's a bit easier to do. Um, it doesn't keep the tail as neat. You can use it as well as a tail bandage or instead of. Um, what are people's personal preferences? I prefer a tail bandage. Tail bandage? I have a, I think it's a, it's a snuggy hood thing. And it's about 10 times easier to put on than a tail bandage. <laughs> and then, like, if you drop it, it doesn't just go oh. mental and unravel everywhere. And it does, it's more padded than a tail bandage. Okay. And you just whip it on and it's five little elastic straps. Yeah. And little Velcro elastic things that you can pull around. Uh, and it's so easy and it protects their tail really well. Really well. It's really it's long. Really long. You can make it as a yeah yeah and that's a good good point that is something to consider is how easy or hard it is do you guys all know how to put on a tail bandage and a stable bandage yeah yeah would you feel confident doing it in front of an assessor yeah, yeah. probably <laughs> if you wouldn't make sure you practice it more um when you're putting on a stable bandage where should the crossover point be when you come back up the leg? Down the middle of the hoof. Yeah, right in the middle. Um, as you're looking at them straight on, there should be the little cross, like a little triangle, right at the front. Um, with a stable bandage, should it go down to, like, should it go around their fetlock? No, just above the joint so they can actually move the leg. What do other people think on this one? I I think they should do um like you need to do like one loop if that makes sense so not loads but not none just like yeah yeah so um for a stable bandage where they don't need a huge like they're not going to need to be trotting and cantering I would as you say do one loop around the bottom as you change direction to go back up um and what about where should the um like the velcro or whatever the strap be. On a to the outside. The outside. Yep. And what about height wise? Just below their knee. Yeah, so you want it back at the top of the leg. Um, they're less likely to brush it against each other. Um, what about when you're doing your knot on your tail bandage? Whereabouts should that be on the tail? On the side. Yeah, on the side. And is there anything you should do after you tied the knot to stop it coming up? To cover it again. Yeah. With yeah. yeah. Um, and anything you think you should do once your towel bandage is on before you just load your horse? Rebend like their tail. Yeah, gently rebend their tail just because the towel bandage can make it a bit rigid for them and you want them to still like it to sit naturally and be comfortable for them. Does anyone have any questions on any of that? No. 
No. No. Okay, I know it's we're a bit early this week, but that is everything I think we need to cover for mm. what to wear when your horse is travelling and travelling a horse and everything like that. Um, so make um, sure you so know how to bandage. Um, put a stable bandage and a tail bandage on um, and think of all the positive and negatives of the different things you can put your horse in for travelling. Mm. 